Good morning, students. In this video, we are going to have further discussion about digestion. Digestion in small intestine. We will discuss the role of liver. We will discuss the chemicals secreted by liver. We are going to discuss about the role of gallbladder and um, different parts of small intestine. In last session, we have already discussed the diagram of digestive system. as well as elementary canal we have discussed the difference between elementary canal and digestive system elementary canal includes salivary glands sorry elementary um, canal includes mouth esophagus stomach small intestine and large intestine when we are talking about digestive system digestive system will include all these parts which i have discussed right now along with salivary glands liver and pancreas so digestive system is a system which include elementary canal plus all three important digestive glands that is liver salivary glands and pancreas how many types of salivary glands we have we have three kind of salivary glands parotid sublingual sub maxillary parotid is present behind the ear sublingual is present below the tongue and sub maxillary is present near the jaw line after uh, the digestion in mouth now which nutrient is first digested in mouth that is carbohydrate from which enzyme it is digested it is digested with the help of tiny or salivary amylase salivary amylase helps in digestion of carbohydrate and convert this carbohydrate into maltose maltose is a kind of a sugar which helps uh, which impart sweet color sweet color not color sorry sweet taste to food after that food enter into esophagus the term used for the food in esophagus is bolus means bolus is a food which form after the digestion in mouth now bolus enter into esophagus there is no digestion in esophagus inside the esophagus there is just peristalsis movement which push the food from mouth to stomach now inside the stomach there are certain chemicals like hcl is there uh, which provide acidic medium now why acidic medium is required acidic medium is required because pepsin is not present in active state pepsin is present in inactive state that is called pepsinogen and with the help of hcl pepsinogen convert into pepsin after the stomach food enter into small intestine now from here we will discuss for today's discussion so this is the diagram for esophagus this part is esophagus now from the esophagus food enter into stomach when food enter from esophagus to stomach it has to pass from a sphincter muscle that is called esophageal sphincter muscle this reason is esophageal sphincter muscle esophageal sphincter muscle the esophageal sphincter muscle is a muscle which prevent the backflow of food towards the mouth and control the entry of food into stomach when the food is digested in stomach basically protein will be digested um, with the help of pepsin it will convert it into peptides or peptones depend a kind of protein after that food will enter into duodenum this area of stomach is known as pyloric sphincter muscle now pyloric sphincter muscle helps uh, in entry of pile loric it is very difficult to write here anyway from here the food enter into duodenum duodenum is the small part you can see here it is a small part of small intestine small intestine is divided into three regions one is duodenum second is jejunum and third is ileum D for duodenum, D for digestion, and digestion takes place in duodenum. J for jejunum, J for joy. यहाँ पे सिर्फ food की enjoyment होती है. Food stay here, 
and after that food enter into ileum where the further digestion if it is required otherwise absorption takes place now duodenum duodenum is the small part you will look here also this part duodenum is a small part which is uncoiled part this reason is uncoiled reason and this is comparatively small reason where the digestion takes place now here you can see this is the liver wait i will show you in a better way ha ji this part is liver this one and this is pancreas so chemicals will secrete from pancreas chemicals will secrete from liver also ye dekhiye liver se aayenge plus pancreas se then they enter into duodenum and then digestion takes place in duodenum so duodenum contain enzymes which are secreted from pancreas now the question is what are the pancreatic enzymes pancreatic enzymes are three one is salivary amylase sorry not salivary amylase one is pancreatic amylase that is amylopsin amylopsin helps in digestion of carbohydrate then we have trypsin trypsin helps in digestion of protein amylopsin it helps in digestion of amylase second is trypsin which helps in digestion of protein and the third is streptin which helps in digestion of or uh, fat but digestion of fat is not the right term the right term is emulsification of fat because fat is emulsified and converted into uh, fatty acid and glycerol now how this process takes place see this is this is the liver from liver a uh, duct will come that inside the liver bile juice will produce and from the bile juice from this liver this bile juice will come and this bile juice will enter here some of the amount of bile juice will store into gall bladder this is pancreas from pancreas pancreatic juices will come now these two tubes will join together look at this one this will carry bile juice this part will carry pancreatic juices they both together enter into small intestine that is a duodenum region where the digestion takes place now this bile juice this bile juice help in three functions number 1 it provide alkaline medium because the food which is digested in the stomach both acidic in nature due to presence of hcl now for the digestion in duodenum and specifically for the digestion of protein with the help of trypsin we need alkaline medium so or we can say that we have to neutralize the acidic acidic effect to neutralize the acidic effect bile juice is required which provide alkaline medium bile juice helps in emulsification of fat also bile juice is only a substance in a digestion digestion which helps in removal of metabolic waste also after that complete digestion takes place in duodenum after that food enters into jejunum this is the reason see this is the stomach this reason is the stomach and from stomach this reason is duodenum where the digestion takes place kis kis ka digestion hua digestion of carbohydrate with the help of amylase which amylase amylopsin digestion of protein with the help of trypsin digestion or emulsification of fat with the help of streptin after that food enter into jejunum this reason is called jejunum it is comparatively coiled part and jejunum there is no digestion in jejunum it is the it is around 2.5 meter in length and no chemical digestion at all here after that food enter into this ileum region ileum is a part which is long part which is narrow which is highly coiled which is uh, around 3.6 meter in length and here lot of intestinal juices are secreted these intestinal juices further help in digestion if anything is left 
and when complete digestion takes place after that food is absorbed with the help of ileum ileum is have folds ileum is have folds and in each fold there is a villi this is a structure of villi and singular term is villus singular hum kya bolenge villus otherwise it is called villi now this villi this region of villi is made up of सिंगल एपिथीलियल लेयर यहाँ पे ये सिंगल एपिथीलियल की लेयर होती है बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सिंगल एपिथीलियल लेयर द डाइजेस्ट द एब्सॉर्बन ऑफ फूड इज कम्पेरेटिवली इजी क्यों आसानी से एंटर करेगा दिस इज द रीजन विच कैरी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड दिस इज आर्टरी विच कैरी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड एंड नाउ दिस आर्टरी विल डिवाइड इन टू कैपुलरीज एंड further these capillaries unite and form vein so this one reason is the vein okay so artery will carry oxygenated blood and vein will carry deoxygenated blood this particular part is lymph lymph is basically pale yellow or white in color because this lymph is helps in absorption of fat and this lymph is particularly in the kind of the lymph which is present here or the kind of uh, the fluid they are absorbing that is fat and that's why it is known as lestial 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 helps in absorption of fat so what is lestial lestial is a kind of lymph vessel which absorb fat and this lestial word comes after lactose lactose is white in color milk में होता है लैक्टोज एंड मिल्क इज वाइट इन कलर फ्रॉम देयर ओनली दिसल वर्ड और लेस्टियल वर्ड कम्स इट हेल्प्स इन एब्सॉर्बन ऑफ मोनोसेक्राइट्स इट हेल्प्स इन एब्सॉर्बन ऑफ फैटी एसिड सो मोस्ट ऑफ द एब्सॉर्बन हेयर टेक्स प्लेस आफ्टर दैट फूड एंटर इन टू ब्लड नाउ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज वट एवर वी हैव टेकन दैट इज डाइजेस्टेड आईदर इन माउथ और इन स्टमक or in small intestine till now there was no regulation whatever we have eaten we have digested no no matter whether we have eaten eaten something which was poisonous or we have eaten something which was very much in quantity or quality whatever so now we have to regulate the movement of nutrients when the food is absorbed in small intestine or in this villi region mein jab ye food absorb ho jata hai after that we have to send this food to liver hame yahan liver mein us food ko bhejna hai ye liver ke andar food ko we have to send why we have to send it to liver let's understand this part first see if suppose let's understand one example by mistake you have eaten the food which contains some toxic material or which was uh, the i mean stale food basi khana tha and you have digested and it was not good for your health if from here directly it enter into the heart it will circulate into the entire body and then you can't do anything so what your blood is doing that from the villi blood ट्रांसफर टू लिवर फर्स्ट ये यहाँ लिवर में जाएगा ठीक है एंड इन साइड द लिवर देर विल बी लॉट ऑफ रेगुलेशन विल टेक स्पेस नो वट रेगुलेशन विल टेक स्पेस लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इन लिवर एक्स्ट्रा ग्लूकोज विल कन्वर्टेड इन टू ग्लाइकोजन ग्लूकोज विल कन्वर्टेड इन टू ग्लाइकोजन now why we have to convert this glucose into glycosin we have to convert glucose into glycosin because that glucose is not cannot store for a long time glycosin is a food which can be stored for a long time that's why we have to convert it into glycosin and glycosin is a stored food material for example if you are not eating food for a long time then you are not supposed to die because of lack of glucose because you have stored glycosin yes definitely if the stored glycosin is not there then it can create problem if we take an extra protein extra if we have taken extra protein these extra protein can be converted into amino acids 
and still if amino acids whatever amino acids we have converted these amino acids will transfer to blood or transfer to different regions of the blood wherever it is required still if there is extra amino acids then deamination takes place now what is a deamination deamination break down amino acids into urea and this urea is released through urine ye urine se bahar nikal jayega so what we have done we have we have regulated glucose amount we have regulated protein amount now if we have extra fat this extra fat will convert into fatty acid and glycerol and this fatty acid and glycerol will utilized for different functions like lipids bante hain and these lipids are used in synthesis of cell membrane they will help in the formation of cell membrane no what else if you have taken toxic food so liver will detoxify this toxic food detoxification will takes place means it will try to convert More toxic food into less toxic food. It doesn't mean that we can take any toxic food because our liver can function for that. It's not like that. But yes, if something uh, is little toxic in nature, that could be detoxified with the help of liver. But please keep in your mind there is a certain limit of liver. It cannot do it like that. Now. we have already digested glucose we have digested protein we have digested fat we have digested uh, we have detoxified toxic food now this food can enter into heart ab yahan se this food can enter into heart because all most of the material is regulated so from liver the food will enter into heart this is now ready to circulate inside the body but keep in your mind we cannot send blood directly from the intestine to heart because we have to regulate not many things ho sakta hai you are very happy and that's why you have taken lot of um, sweets and if might be your stomach your small intestine have digested but we cannot circulate this much of sugar at a time in the entire body what we have to do we will send it to first liver liver will convert into glycogen and, and the whatever amount is required will utilize in the body or circulated inside the body and this particular uh, activity is known known as portal system the system is called portal system and as liver is involved that's why this is known as hepatic portal system look here it is given here hepatic word is related with liver hepatic word is related with liver that's why this entire system is known as hepatic portal system now what is hepatic portal vein hepatic portal vein is the vein which carry blood from small intestine to liver to small intestine se liver mein lekar jayegi that is called hepatic portal vein hepatic because of liver portal because it is a smaller vein and we to aapko pata hi hai now let's discuss of some of the function of liver liver removes potentially toxic by product of certain medications ye kuch medicines ke toxic effect ko reduce kar sakti hai and if we have taken some toxic food that also can be detoxify in certain amount with the help of liver i am not talking about the toxic food i am talking about the some kind of toxicity present in food it prevents shortage of nutrients by storing vitamins minerals and sugar it can uh, store vitamins what uh, vitamins are stored here fat soluble vitamins like a d e k store here it can store extra minerals it can store extra sugar in the form of glycogen it metabolize or break down nutrients from the food to produce energy it helps in the formation of energy also it produces most of the protein needed by the body and if extra proteins are there it can do deamination and can produce urea it helps in fighting infection because it helps in removal of bacteria that to the the toxicity i was talking so they can remove if any germs enter in food and more or less some food is, germs is enter in food it could be digested with the help of uh, saliva it could be digested with the help of acid 
but if still it is left it could be digested with the help of liver also it produces most of the substance that regulate blood clotting that is it helps in the production of heparin now what is heparin heparin is anti coagulant anti coagulant anti coagulant is something which helps in which prevents sorry anti coagulant which prevent blood clotting kya prevent karta hai blood clotting ab kaun sa anti coagulant produce hota hai that is heparin this is important one so this is one of the important function of uh, liver that heparin an anti coagulant is produced by the liver it helps in production on the other hand it helps in production of fibrinogen also now what is fibrinogen fibrinogen is a protein which helps in clotting so this is the blood clotting so liver is one of the important factor which helps in blood clotting as well as which prevent blood clotting inside the body body ke andar blood clotting ko prevent karne ke liye it produce heparin while it produce fibrinogen for blood clotting when the bleeding occurs okay liver uh, also helps in storage of certain proteins uh, proteins vitamins also it store vitamins a d e k a d e k is a fat soluble vitamin which is stored inside the liver so let's have a final recap liver produces bile juice liver produces urea by the deamination of protein liver store nutrients like fat glucose vitamins a d e k and minerals etc liver is a site where the rbc is produced in infants and liver is a site where the rbc destroy in adults bachcho mein rbc yahan banti hai aur adults mein rbc destroy hoti hai and actually by the uh, you know by the division of rbc rbc ke division se rbc ke tootne se hi they produce bile juice how they produce bile juice with the help of our and decomposition of rbc actually when rbc decompose they produce two pigments bilirubin and bilirubin and bilirubin and bilirubin after further digestion produce bile juice so uh, and at last they helps in removal of toxic metabolites or they helps in uh, i mean detoxify the toxic metabolites if something enter in your body and uh, this all was a discussion for today in next video we are going to discuss about how food is absorbed in large intestine and how assimilation takes place till then take care goodbye